In this video, we're gonna talk about heated glass. We'll talk about how it operates, basic circuit design, some testing just to show what the operation looks like, and then some diagnostic testing that we can do. All right, so the heated glass system is often referred to as heated glass or a defrost grid, defogger. It goes by a bunch of different names, but it's the same basic idea regardless. And that is a resistive mat that is placed on the glass. So frequently, right, most commonly, we see it on the back glass of vehicles. But we also see this on the side mirrors, and we even see it on windshields in some applications. At the root, they're all 12 volt based systems, right? And so let's look at service info and see what that has to show us, right? And anytime I wanna learn more, if I don't know what to expect, I need to look at service info so I can understand better how the system is put together, how it should work. So here on service info, I'm on all data. We're looking at our Toyota RAV4. Uh, started by going to windows and glass, then heated glass element. And I'm in the description in operation, which we find here on the right side. This is a great place to start if I don't understand a system and I need to learn more. Always start here so you can kind of bring yourself up to speed. So the first one I get is windshield de-icer. That's not quite what we want, right? We are after the defogger for the rear. So here I get two choices or two pieces of information. I get one that says with manual air conditioner, that's what my vehicle has and then another one with automatic air conditioner. So we'll focus on this one because ours has the manual climate control unit. And you'll see it's a pretty basic circuit where I've got my button and everything in the bottom left here. You can see it's got an LED that illuminates when it's active when I select. The input of that switch runs through a timer circuit. Most of these are set to run a specific period of time, five minutes, eight minutes. Um, maybe 12 minutes, they'll run that in the first press of the button and then most of the systems will then reduce that time for any subsequent pushes of the button. Um, so that varies manufacturer to manufacturer but that's some general idea of the functionality. So when I push that button, it helps turn on my relay. So you'll see that this circuit interacts with the coil side, the ground and coil side of my relay for DEF or defrost relay. So when I turn my relay on, current flows through a fuse through my relay. I have a secondary fuse just for the mirrors or the rear grid, right? And so I've got three things that come off this one circuit and they're all in parallel, right? So the rear grid and the two mirrors on this vehicle. We're gonna focus most of our efforts on the rear grid um, because it's larger, easier to see. Most mirrors, the grid is actually behind the glass and so we can't see it and interact with it quite as well. So I've done some work to take a lot of the paneling off just so we can look at the grid and look at the connections more easily, right? And so some vehicles you can get to the two connection points with all the trim panels. Um, sometimes you can reach them with test equipment, you know, with probes and things like that. But just to illustrate better, right? We've removed everything on this vehicle. So a resistive grid is really basic, just like we saw on the wire diagram. It is just a single unit, but it is a pretty large, parallel circuit in itself, right? And so here at this side, this is my connector for my input. So this is where my 12 volts is gonna come in. It goes to a specialty connector right here that touches the resistive grid on the glass. Those are adhered with a special epoxy that's conductive. Those are known to break off. And so that's a great place to start if you're looking at this from a diagnostic end. You know, do I have a connection to the glass, right? Do I have 12 volts? We'll take a look at that in a second. So that goes here. I've got one large strip at the side that then breaks off into all these parallel branches that shoots across. I hit another um, kind of cap that takes all those branches into the ground side where I've got a ground eyelet right down here just on the chassis. So one of the easy tests that I can do on this is to measure resistance and see if it's what I expect it to be. The downside to this test is that I probably am not going to get a manufacturer specification for what this should be. So we could start with just do we have continuity. So here I've just got my meter on resistance. So I'm going to take my leads. I'm going to put one on the connector here. I've got it unplugged. No current through the circuit because we're looking at resistance. The other one I'm putting on the ground strap over here. Once I get a good connection and let it sit. It looks like we've got about 1.3, 1.4 ohms worth of resistance. That's a pretty good reading. We do expect this to be rather low um, because it is a parallel circuit. It's gonna take a lot of amperage 
to put enough current through each of these branches to create the heat we need to defrost or de-ice the back glass, right? And so we expect to have low resistance so that we've got some higher current. Another test that we can do is to look at whether or not the whole grid is functioning. It's pretty difficult for us in a shop to replicate, you know, icing this up or um, fogging this up. And so we're gonna use our voltmeter to look at the individual branches and determine whether or not they're functioning properly. And so checking resistance is great for the whole grid, but because it's in parallel, I can't isolate just an individual branch to do a continuity test. That's where doing a volt drop test is gonna be better. So to do this, I'm gonna start by turning my key on to the on position. And then I'm gonna select my defrost to make sure I've got an indicator there to show that everything's turned on. So then back in my grid, everything should be going. I should see this warm up. One of the tests I could do is take an infrared thermometer one of the, and aim and hit each of these to look for temperature variance. Or if I had a thermal imager, that might also show me that to me. Um, we're gonna go and we're gonna set our meter to volts. I'm gonna select my ground just on the ground strap right here. I'm gonna take my lead and go to individual parts of the circuit just like this and just touch and hold it on the resistive grid. And I should see voltage coming through. Depending on where I place this, I should see a change in my voltage. So out this way, I see about two volts. Inboard like this, I see a pretty small voltage, maybe a little bit less than a tenth. So here we've got, again, a reference just on our ground strap, and we'll take a couple of different measurements. So here is about three inches over. And so what I could do to decide whether I've got broken grids is start on the ground side and just go right up the line, really cautiously touching each of these and seeing that they all have very similar voltage levels. So those checks help me understand if the grid's in good shape. I start on the ground side because if I had one of these that was an open circuit where say this was scratched and current can't flow across, when I get to that one that's open, I'm gonna see a different voltage value. And if I keep working over, once I get to the left side or the power side of that open circuit, I'm gonna see 12 volts. And so if I did repeat this test, you know, I go down one side, this third, and keep going across, I'm gonna find the one that's open circuit pretty quickly. It's gonna stand out. Either it's gonna have a high voltage or a very low voltage. The last thing we're going to look at is use the picoscope just to see what does the operation look like in terms of current and our voltage if we were to graph it, right? And so I've got my amp clamp here to look at the current flow. I've got voltage, just one lead on my positive going in. And then I've got my ground strap here on the eyelet at the chassis. All right, so we've got a fresh screen going on the picoscope. We're going to cycle the power just to see what that on event looks like. So there you can see we had our dip and it went back up. And so I'm running right about just under 10 amps with about 10 volts going through the circuit. So not much to look at on this system, right? A heated glass system, it's just on. It's on for a long period of time, it shuts off. So my scope trace isn't real exciting, but it's about what we expected, right? We had just over an ohm worth of resistance on that whole grid, you know, about 1.4 ohms. So to see that it's got just under 10 amps, that was our expectation, all those things line up. One test that the PicoScope would help me with is that say I had an issue with my heated glass where maybe the timer function wasn't what it was supposed to be or we thought maybe it was turning off prematurely. I could use the PicoScope to, with the current clamp to look at how long is it on. I could set it up and graph it you know, over 20 minutes, 10 minutes, five minutes, and be able to measure that period of time pretty easily, right? And also visually see when it cuts out or when it turns off. So that's our heated glass circuit, pretty basic circuit on the vehicle. One that hopefully is easy to diagnose and work through. We just needed an active understanding about how it should work. Most of our interactions with this is where people damage the grid, you know, they, the window tint, a sticker, maybe poor cleaning practices. And there are some products that you can use. You can buy a um, resistive grid epoxy or um, conductive kind of material where it comes with a stencil or you could use painter's tape where you could paint on a small section of the grid to repair it. Um, that product, I believe, does say that it's not meant to be utilized for um, a scratch greater than two or three inches. And so that's something to think about. There are some instances where 
replacing the whole sheet of glass might be the only option. The other thing we see is where the contacts, where my current is gonna come in for the circuit and attach to the glass, we see those get ripped off or fall off. Again, there's some conductive epoxy you can buy to put those back on, and so maybe you could save the window at that point.